Let's take a step back and learn how to work with Blender's UI since it is a bit different than other programs, but once you get used to it, you'll find it really flexible and responsive. We've already checked out the toolbar a bit, which is on the left of the 3D view, and we've seen how it can hover over the right edge, left click and drag to first go to a two column layout, and then all the way to a full list with the names. However, we can also hover over that same edge, left click and drag the other way, all the way until it's completely gone. To get it back, you can either click this tiny, tiny arrow, or you can go to the view menu and toggle it here. The hotkey for the toolbar is T, so we can also just hit T anywhere in the 3D view to pop that in and out. Underneath that, then you'll see that we have another region called the sidebar, which we haven't looked at yet. And the sidebar is kind of like Blender's drawer of miscellaneous quick settings. In the item tab, we'll get the transforms for the active object, the same as we have in the properties editor. It's just there for convenience when we're working with any of these other tabs. The one thing the sidebar has here though, which is unique, is the absolute dimensions of our object, which for whatever reason, isn't in our properties editor. Underneath the item tab, we have the tool tab, which shows us all the settings in our active tool. The box select tool doesn't really have very many settings though, so I'll hit tab to go into edit mode and choose one of these tools that does. For these types of tools, it's sometimes useful to see this in a vertical layout rather than a horizontal truncated layout up here in the tool settings header. If you'd rather work with it in the sidebar and not up here in the header, then you can also go to view and toggle off tool settings. You can also get to these exact same tool settings over in the properties editor at the top tab, which is the screwdriver and the wrench. So there are three different ways of finding the exact same settings and you can just pick whichever one is most convenient for you. Now to close the sidebar, then we can either just left click and drag on the side all the way to the end and toggle it with this little arrow, go to the view menu, just like we already saw, or use the hotkey N. You might also hear this referred to as the end panel in some tutorials and other places online because that's what we used to call it before it had an official name. As you're working, you'll often switch between the 3D view, the outliner, and the properties editor, but sometimes it's helpful just to make the 3D view as big as possible. To do that and temporarily maximize it over all the others, you can go to view, area, and toggle maximize area, or use the hotkey control spacebar. So now I can just work in a really big 3D view, and then whenever I'm finished or need one of the other editors, I can just hit control spacebar. This works in any editor. So if I wanted a really big timeline, then I can just hover my mouse over it and hit control spacebar. The hotkeys in Blender are all dependent on which editor your mouse is hovering over. So for example, if I hit R to rotate, I can do that in the 3D view. But if I have my mouse over any of these other editors and hit R, then nothing's going to happen. So just think about where your mouse is if your hotkeys don't seem to be doing anything. In the same view and area menu where we maximize the viewport, we can also choose toggle quad view or use the hotkey control alt Q, which might be familiar for people coming from 3ds max. Here we have a top view on the top left, a front view and a side view, as well as our perspective view. Though that's hard to see with just a cube. So let's go ahead and add a monkey instead. And now we can see all sides of it at the same time, though it looks like it's breaking the screencast keys out on for me. So I'm going to hit control alt Q and toggle out of that. Editors in blender are also really flexible. I can hover my mouse over any of the borders and just left click and drag to make them bigger or smaller. I think you'll appreciate how smoothly these move around as compared to most other apps. Another interesting thing that you can do is make the interface itself larger or smaller in any of the editors by holding down control and then holding down the middle mouse button and moving your mouse up or down. This isn't too awfully helpful in most editors because we can also go to edit and preferences and under interface, change the overall resolution scale of the UI. So I usually just set it there instead, but if you want to make one area larger or smaller, then you can do that. For example, I often do that on my toolbar, which I find is just a little bit too big for my tastes. So I'll hold down control and then just hold in my mouse wheel and move my mouse down. We can also split and duplicate our editors very easily in Blender just by hovering our mouse over one of the borders until we get those double arrows for resizing them, right click and choose either vertical or horizontal split. I'll choose a vertical split and that way I can cut my 3D viewport directly in half. And now I have two 3D views that operate independently. Maybe this one I'll put into front view, hide my toolbar, hide my gizmos and overlays, and just have a clean view of the mesh. So these viewports can have different properties. However, the tool that's active in the tool settings remains consistent across all of them. We can also split our editor horizontally by hovering over the edge again, right clicking and choosing horizontal split. You can make as many of these editors as you'd like. And then when you're ready to join them back, just right click and choose join areas instead. Hover your mouse over whichever one you'd like to close and left click. Again, that's hover your mouse over the border, right click, join areas, and then click on the area you want to close. 
Another way of doing this, which is arguably faster, but also more accident prone, is that you can go to any of these round borders until your mouse changes into crosshairs, and then you can left click and drag out from the border in order to make a cut. So if you do that and drag out horizontally, then you'll make a vertical slice. And then if you hover over the corner and then drag up, then you'll make a horizontal split. To join them back together, just hover your mouse over the corner and then drag into the other editor. I said this is accident prone because sometimes you can misclick a little bit and then get your mouse into the wrong one. But for the most part, this works pretty well. You can also work with editors in multiple windows if you want by going to view, area, and duplicate area into new window. Now I could do something like put this on a second monitor. As with basically everything in Blender, there's also a hotkey for this, which is just if you hover your mouse over one of these corners, hold shift, and then drag, and that'll duplicate out a new window. So I could do this for any editor, for example, the outliner. I could do that and just have this hovering over the side of my 3D viewport if I wanted. Now it'll hover above the main window, at least for me because I'm on Windows, but it might not do that for you depending on what your operating system is. To get to that same menu in the other editors that don't have a view menu, you can also just right click and go to area. Speaking of editors, there are a lot of different editors in Blender, each designed to perform a different task. You can switch any editor in its top left drop down menu where you'll get the full list. So for example, I could swap this out for the outliner and I could swap the outliner out for the properties editor. Or I can make one of these the 3D view. Put all of these pieces together and you can customize the layout of Blender's UI however you want. Different layouts are often good for different types of tasks, which is exactly why we have these tabs here at the top. They're all labeled as a different step in the 3D pipeline, and clicking on them will bring you to a new layout that's geared for that particular task. These are called our workspaces. One of the important things to know about switching workspaces is that it can also switch you modes. For example, in the layout workspace, I'm switched to object mode, but if I go to the modeling workspace, I'm switched to edit mode. If you'd like to change this, then you can just go to the tool properties, go to workspace, and change the mode here. Now let's say that you have all of your workspaces and all of your layouts set up exactly the way that you want. The problem with that is that if you go to file and new and open up a new file, everything will be reset to the default. So what you'd want to do instead is open up a new file, make the changes that you'd like, and then go to file, defaults, and save startup file. That way they'll be there every time you open up a fresh scene. If somehow that goes wrong and you need to completely reset Blender, then you can also go to this menu and choose Load Factory Settings. That will set everything back to the way it was the very first time that you opened Blender. So knowing now that you can always get back to the default, take some time and practice switching, splitting, and customizing your editors.